about three seconds. And I believe we are live. Hi, Edmund. How are you doing? Hi, how's it going, Leo? I'm doing well, thanks. Yourself? I'm also doing well. So Edmund doesn't have his webcam on, but he will be able to answer questions that you ask uh, inside of the Etherpad uh, that I've shared again on IRC. Uh, right now, we only have quite one question, and we have about 14 minutes of question time. So feel free to add as many questions as you want. And in the meantime, we'll get started on the first one. Unless, Edmund, do you have anything to say after your, uh, your presentation? No, we can jump in. Okay, lovely. So first question, is the e index, uh, sorry, does the index really matter here? I mean, his colleague is also using some A4 paper, and do you think that the index card is the most important thing here? Uh, that's a great question. I mean, I think um, you can do anything with a larger piece of paper that you can do with a smaller piece of paper, but I'd actually encourage you to try this out. I did, um, uh, not for research for this talk, but just when I read about uh, Nabokov and his index cards to begin with, I kind of tried it out a little bit um, and did wrote some shorter things on index cards and so on. And there really is something about the size and the kind of ability to manipulate them. Um, you really can bundle them and move them around easier. Uh, and um, I think that that, I think he enjoyed that. So sure, I mean, I think you can do anything with A4 paper that you could do with index cards, but I think there's something about that form that lends itself to the, especially to the reorganization, um, maybe to the focus as well, just because it's smaller, but um, but definitely to the reorganization. Definitely. Um, so we have a lot of more questions now. So thank you everyone for answering my plea for more questions. Uh, next question. How do you explore the second level headings, i.e. the scenes in this example, without the heading itself, just the content? Is that clear enough? Uh, great question. Yeah, so um, I've tried two ways, um, uh, sorry, three ways with this uh, and landed on one that I like. Uh, originally, I used um, the OX package. There's a, an OX ignore um, uh, thing in there where you can add an ignore tag to the uh, where you don't want the headings, but you do want the content exported. Um, I found that a little bit annoying, just visually annoying when I'm, you know, again, kind of my theme here is navigating 100,000 word documents uh, effectively. And having that extra visual noise was kind of a pain. Uh, so I ended up, um, originally, first I just did like a dumb aux script uh, as part of my publication kind of pipeline that removed uh, um, headlines at the at the you know scene level, um, and then actually because I ended up leading so heavily on Pandoc and Pandoc. Um, for those of you who have not uh, looked at recent versions of Pandoc, they've got a really fantastic um, way to use Lua at this point to write filters. Uh, so you can kind of take the AST of your document and run these very simple Lua filters over it. They used to be in Haskell, which <laughs> I'm not smart enough to write Haskell is one of the things that I've discovered. I keep bouncing off of it, but uh, I'm just smart enough to write Lua. And so um, I, I use a Lua filter now, which I'm happy to publish to anyone who's interested. Uh, that basically lets me say, um, you know, what level uh, headings to but get rid of the heading, but publish the content. And part of the reason that's been useful is that some of the other novels I'm working on, for example, have different levels of hierarchy where maybe there's a, a part and then, you know, at the top level and then chapter and then scene and it's now the third level instead of the second. And it's much easier in the Lua to just be like, remove the third level headings or the second level headings or whatever it is. Um, so that's been, that's been helpful. Great. Um, moving on to the next question. Uh, slightly off topic. When, where, sorry, where can we see your novels? Oh well, uh, yeah, you can. Um, I, they're on Amazon. Uh, there's there's two of them in a book of short stories. Um, I think the the short stories and the second novel, which is called World Enough in Time, which is the one um, that kind of prompted this talk, are probably of more interest to this uh, to to an Emacs focused group. Uh, the first one's like a philosophical murder mystery, um, but the the uh, World Enough in Time is a um, kind of uh, Douglas Adams inspired sci-fi comedy uh, about kind of hijinks on a on a relativistic uh, speed space cruiser, um, which was a lot of fun to write, has a lot of twisty subplots, uh, which is kind of where I developed that technique of being able to um, filter down to tags and see um, a, a reduced version of the novel, which was very handy uh, when when trying to juggle 13 subplots. So yeah, check it out. Great. Uh, we'll make sure that you have the links um, available on the talk page afterwards. Right now, I 
sadly have to host. So I cannot look up the links, but we'll make sure. Or if anyone yeah, in the chat, there you I go. I put it in yeah. there for you. And I'll, oh, I'll you did. It. Yeah. Splendid. Thank you. Uh, in the meantime, we'll move on to the next question. Uh, have you looked at the denote signature features? The hierarchical nature of Lumen's ideas and index cards work works well with denote signatures. So are you familiar with denote first? I am not. No, it sounds like something that I should check out. Yeah, denote is uh is it's a way to work with slip boxes. It's uh, we talked a little bit about it earlier today. We talked about Orgrom, we talked about denote as well as a lighter alternative to Orgrom. And uh, yeah, the organization with index cards feels like it's something that would highly benefit from linking and bank backlinks and any kind of UX functionality for relating pieces of uh, informations. So yeah, definitely look it up. Yeah, I, I'm a heavy Orgrom user. I use Orgrom uh, for a lot of different stuff, and um, I would love. Uh, I will definitely check out Denote as a as an alternative. Sure, I'm not particular personally familiar with what Signature is within Denote, and it'd be great if the person who asked the question could perhaps provide more details so that uh, Edmund could get a little more information when he returns to the document. But yeah, if you're using Orgrom, you already are. You're already within the mindset that you need, and perhaps you'd gain a little bit extra stuff from uh, using Dino's signature, I assume. Um, we have eight minutes. We're still good on time. Uh, next question. Do you have a workflow combining handwritten index cards and org mode? Uh, great question. I, I do not. I do I do write by hand when I get, um, when I get, uh, I don't know what a good term for it is. I'll call it like editorial paralysis or something when I find it very hard to move forward in something because I keep going back and tweaking. Um, and I will handwrite stuff at that point and then type it in because it's so much harder to to um, get stuck in editing mode when you're when you have to move forward on the page. But I've never uh, I, I I don't use index cards in the um, the blog article that I link in my talk, the ewj.io slash emacs one. Uh, I did try using uh, handwritten or spreadsheet outlines at one point and um, found them very very clumsy for. Uh, for um, novel writing, just because I do so much, I mean, I do so much revision that moving things around meant that I had to keep two things in sync with each other, the prose and the outline. And that was what really led me to org mode uh, as a way to keep the, again, I think part of the key for me is keeping the outline and the ta the prose right next to each other um, in a way that they move around, which is just um, really, I don't know, for me, really, really powerful. OK, great. So we finished the list of questions available on the pad. Uh, but I see that some people have joined us on BBB. So hi, everyone. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to unmute yourself and ask them. Uh, otherwise, we might go on a break. So I'm going to give you about 10 seconds to unmute yourself. Or if you just want to add more questions on the pad, that's also fine. And I'll give you about 30 seconds. Uh, otherwise, we'll need to go on a break. And in the meantime, I'll thank you, um, Edmund, for your presentation, because it's uh, it's always nice, you know. We uh, the the reason why we have two tracks, and we've been having two tracks for the last two or three editions of Emacs Conf, is because it's really nice to have those talks, which are, you know, still related to Emacs and to far distance development, because we are obviously using packages. But it's really nice to see when we foray into other areas like writing or any kind of academia-based topics. So thank you. It's, a, it's really nice. It's, it brings a, a different colors to the spectrum of what EmacsConf is and what ultimately Emacs is as well. Thank you. Well, thanks to everyone who tuned in. And Leo, thanks to you and all the other organizers for putting this together. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, all right. I think we're going to go on a little break for five minutes because I don't see other questions being asked. So uh, everyone, we'll see you again in five minutes. And thank you again, Edmund. Cheers. <laughs>